What if there was an easy way to turn any photorealistic shader into a stylized one within minutes? With the amount of free photorealistic materials online, it's really easy to just download, drag and drop in materials to make a finished model. But not so easy if you want your models to be stylized, and especially not in the anime style. Which is why I'm gonna teach you exactly how you can turn nearly any photorealistic shader into a finished anime stylized material. And I'll also add a little bonus Bonus tip in there for you that will make all of your anime materials look even better. So keep an eye out for that. But first, welcome to the Comfy Mug channel. My name is Christian and I spend countless hours learning how to make anime stuff in Blender so that you don't have to. So if you want to gain years of experience and knowledge in only a fraction of the time, make sure to like the video and subscribe with notifications so you don't miss out. And check out my Patreon. The first tier is only $2 a month and you get custom built assets made by me at the start of each month. I really appreciate your support there as it makes it possible for me to continue making these tutorials on YouTube. But with that all out of the way, let's get into the video. Now, for the sake of this tutorial, I linked the base project file in the description for you guys to follow along if you want. Oh, and also, if you don't have this enabled already, Node Wrangler is an incredible tool to navigate the shader editor a lot quicker. As for the types of materials I'll be working with, I have one smooth and one rough material. And as the method for changing a rough photorealistic material into a stylized anime one builds off of the steps it takes to do the same for a smooth material, I'll be starting this tutorial with the smooth PBR wood material here and hide the rock for now. As a rule of thumb, nearly every photorealistic shader will have three outputs, the color, roughness, and normal or bump displacement outputs. Using all of these outputs together is what makes a 3D texture look realistic. But when making a stylized texture, especially in the anime style, most of the time, the only output we will want to use is the color. So if you're following along with me in this project, you can delete all the other outputs as well as the principal BSDF, leaving just the base color and the texture group node. If you're working in a different project and your shader uses image texture nodes, the only one you will need to keep is the image texture and other nodes, if there are any, that are connected to the color of the principal BSDF. Once we've cleaned up the shader a little, we'll want to add a diffuse BSDF, shader to RGB, brightness and contrast node, and two mixed color nodes. Connect the nodes as you see on screen, making sure to connect the color output of the original photorealistic shader into the diffuse color input. We'll then want to increase the brightness to 0.3 and the contrast to 0.6 and crank the color stops as you see on screen. Each of these steps will vary a little depending on the specific material you use, but the main goal in doing this is to reduce the amount of detail in a given texture to simplify the look and give it a stylized effect. We'll then connect the color ramp to our first mix colors factor and change the A color to a darker tan and the B color to a lighter tan. But after we've found the colors we want, we'll connect the result to the A input of our next mix color and change it to color dodge. This will allow us to put a third, more saturated color into the B input that will influence the overall color and make our material pop more. I like to use a bright orange for wood and turn down the factor to 0.3, but this all depends on what kind of look you want your shader to have. No wrong answers here. Now, we could stop there, but I always like to give my shaders the ability to react to different colored lights in a given scene. So all we have to do for this is select our diffuse and shader to RGB, press shift D to duplicate them, and bring our new nodes to the very front of our shader, connecting the result of our color dodge to the color input of our new diffuse. And to add the cherry on top for this shader, I'll use the inverted hole method to give the object an outline with a slightly darker and more saturated color. I go over this method and other methods of how to add outlines to your materials in my anime outlines tutorial. So make sure to check that out after this video if you want to heighten the stylized look for your anime renders. And just like that, we've turned a smooth surfaced photorealistic material into a fully stylized anime shader. 
but there are a few more steps required in order to do the same for a more rough looking material. So what we'll want to do is select and copy all of the nodes we added for our smooth surface material, make our rock visible again, and paste the nodes into the shader of our rock. Now, if we plug the color output into our stylized node setup as is, it won't look as good as we'd like it because there's too much cloudy detail in the original image. So what we'll want to do instead is get rid of of our regular mix color and change our color ramp to constant, making the white stop a little bit grayer and connect the color to the A input of our color dodge. Oh, and also change the orange color to a sky blue color or something like that. At this point, we'll need to adjust the color ramp a bit so that we can actually start to get the light and shadow interaction on our object. And because this is more of a rough and detailed rock material, we'll want to make a few more color stops, each one gradually getting darker and darker as they get closer to the black stop. I ended up with eight color stops in total, and it was a little difficult to see them all in such a small space, so if you need to, just stretch out the edge of the node so you can see the color stops a little better. The idea for this is to have four main value shifts, and a subtle value shift in between each big shift, to make it look like a more gradual change to counteract the harsh transitions between color stops. But but if that was confusing to you, which it was pretty confusing for me to say, <laughs> all you need to do is make it look something like what you see on screen here. There is no right or wrong way to do this. Once you've gotten a look you like, you can add another outline to your object, and you'd think that we'd be done here. But as a bonus tip for you guys, I'm actually going to teach you how to do something so simple and subtle you barely even visually notice it, but it makes any and all of your 3D shaders instantly look like they belong in a 2D anime world together. And to show you what I mean, we have to take a look at a scene in an anime called Chainsaw Man. Now, when I first saw this scene, nothing really stood out to me. The colors of the scene are all pretty bland and calm, nothing out of the ordinary, right? Until I went back and watched this very short clip and realized that the chairs are 3D. They wouldn't have that parallax effect if they weren't. And you can even see that same parallax effect very subtly on the train's window curtains. And then I realized that I had my settings at the highest quality, but there was still a lot of noise and grain on every surface in the scene. Only the characters seemed to have less grain the higher the quality of the video. And then, the more I watched this and other anime, the more I became convinced that the secret to making anime style shaders in 3D is to add this subtle noise. So, a super easy way to do this for any given shader is to add a mix color just before the diffuse, set it to overlay, add a color ramp connected to a white noise texture, press Ctrl T on that white noise to add a mapping and texture coordinate node with the vector set to object, connect the color to the B input, and voila! It is perfect. <laughs> Apply this to every shader in your scene, and no matter how close or far away from an object you get, the noise will stay the same size, instantly making all of your objects look like they belong together in a scene. But go check out my anime outlines tutorial to make your anime renders even more cohesive and stylized. Remember to like and subscribe, and tell me about the photorealistic shaders you were able to stylize with the help of this tutorial in the comment section below. I want to say thank you so incredibly much to my patrons who have continued to support me and engage in my community. You guys are literally helping make my dream come true, and I can't tell you how much hope you have given me. Thank you guys. And thank you, the viewer, for watching the video. I hope you all have a comfy day, and I'll see you here next time at the Comfy Mug.